Hi, I'm Alex. I'm 27 years old and I currently live in New Jersey. So I grew up here in this very house that I'm sitting in right now. I think that I had a really, really good childhood, a lot of really happy memories. I have two sisters and I'm the middle child and two really, really incredible loving parents that I'm so grateful for. So since I was a kid, I've always been extremely, extremely sensitive. I would cry so easily and so strongly that it was really, really difficult to control my emotions for as long as I can remember. It took me a very long time to get my BPD diagnosis. And a big part of that was because I was really high functioning. So there were actually a few different doctors that I went to, psychiatrists, that I was like, I, you know, I think I have this thing called BPD, I'm not sure. And they'd be like, no, no, you have a good job, you have friends, you have relationships, you're fine. It really wasn't until I went through a breakup at one point and I completely fell apart that I went back to my psychiatrist and I was like, so? And she was like, yeah, you have BPD. It took a long time, but I finally getting the diagnosis for me felt really validating because it's something I had known for so long. For me, I think BPD was really surrounded around that fear of abandonment. My symptoms all kind of surround that. Frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, extreme emotions, like really, really intense, painful, painful emotions. Um, suicidality, self-harm. I was constantly anxious, constantly depressed. I was super lucky to have gotten into an incredible advanced DBT group, which was group therapy for four days a week and individual ther therapy one day a week. I did that for about like nine months and I got better. It took, it took a while at first, but once I finished DBT, my self-harm was reduced so much, my suicidality was reduced so much, and it still took a while after that for the skills to really sink in. Um, but eventually I started to love myself a lot more and really have compassion for myself. And I think that was the biggest thing is this compassion and really like feeling for myself and being a friend for myself. And after I kind of got through all of that and felt really good about my future and who I was, I finally realized I wasn't dealing with any of this stuff at all anymore. I say that I'm in functional recovery, but really I don't meet criteria for BPD anymore. So it kind of feels like it's something that's in the past and I don't even really identify with the symptoms so much anymore. And when they come up, it's something that I can handle like very well. And it's crazy because I never ever thought that I would get to this point. I'm currently getting my PhD in clinical psychology, so that takes up most of my life. But when I'm not doing that, I love to just sit at the piano for hours and play and sing. That makes me so happy. I also have a three-year-old golden doodle who has saved me, and I just love, love, love cuddling with her. Starting uh, the PhD, it, it always felt kind of weird because it was a secret at first that I had BPD and, you know, they would talk about it in class in ways I didn't really agree with or were kind of stigmatizing. And eventually over time, I started being really, really open with everyone in my program about my BPD. And I have taught them so much. And I honestly feel so proud about all of that because the whole idea is to have people understand this better. So I kind of also decided to focus my research on BPD too. So I'm currently doing research on the favorite person, which most people watching this video probably know what it is, but it's, you know, that person that maybe we're a little bit too obsessed with that can make or break our day that, you know, we base our self-worth on. I'm really trying to introduce that to, to the science world, to the academic world, because a lot of times we go to our therapists and they don't know what that means. Um, so I'm trying to get that known. I think one of the biggest tips I could give someone who's still struggling with BPD symptoms is don't over identify with the disorder. It's not who you are, and I know it can feel like it because it literally takes over your life when you're in it, but it's really not who you are. You have your own personality. You have your own being underneath all of this crap that's BPD. And it's so important to just stay true to who you really are inside. And if you don't really know who that is right now, you will figure it out. There are ways to figure that out. But I think we all know deep down core values or things like that. We know those things deep down. So 
don't over identify with the diagnosis. It's really not who you are and it does not define you. I think something that makes my life worth living is just moments where I can be outside in nature. I love, love, love being outside. Another thing that really makes life worth living is just like doing the, the work that I do. Um, I really think that, I don't know, I'm just working towards something and I feel like I'm making a difference and that's always been one of my core values is, is helping people. So being able to live according to my, like the biggest core value for me it makes life totally worth living. Something that I feel about myself that I did not used to feel about myself is I'm so strong and I used to really not like talking about myself in positive ways and it kind of feels like wrong in a way. It feels like narcissistic in a way to say good things about myself. But at this point, I know that it's, it's good to recognize all the positives about yourself. And Gosh, it's so hard to go through the stuff that we go through with BPD and to not recognize how freaking strong you are when you come out on the other end of it and you're thriving and you're happy and you are able to control your emotions. It's just the strength that's in there is huge.